Christopher Hayek. He's the director of litigation at the Immigration Reform Law Institute. Chris, good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, let's talk about the, yesterday. The, the Supreme Court of the United States heard the travel ban arguments uh, because a, a series of judges said that the president, if I have this right, basically didn't have the constitutional right to impose a travel ban because of the words he's used in the past, and they considered it a Muslim ban. But the Supreme Court seemed to look favorably on the president's ability to ban certain countries from immigrating to the United States. What's your take? Well, I think it went well for the government in one sense in that they probably won their case. But how they win it is uh, very important. It's what we should look at in the, in the opinion, if indeed the government does win. It's uh, uh, vitally important that the court not uh, contradict the, its longstanding position that the Establishment Clause and its ban on religious discrimination uh, doesn't apply in foreign policy. Because if it implies, uh, applies in foreign policy, we would have no ability to deal with dangerous religious groups in the world. And, and I, I should say, you know, decisions about who comes into the country are foreign policy decisions. So, so, so even for example, if, so even a if very a, dangerous the, religious group out there now is ISIS. Yes, it's actually a religion, not just a terrorist group. They're a terrorist group because they're a religion. Everything they do, their their desire to take over the world and subjugate everybody else who doesn't believe in their religion, is based on their peculiar. Uh, twisted form of Islam. Right. So I'm tracking Chris. So, so let me let me just back up for a second. So what you're saying is basically even if the president of the United States specifically instituted a Muslim ban when it comes to the issue of if uh, when it comes to an issue of foreign policy, the court should should continue to find that to be a constitutional use of his power. Yes, the court should not um, be involved in that. It's a political question. The political system vets whether we want to discriminate or whether we want to look at religion okay. because there's no other test to have. Otherwise, you know, a U.S. member of ISIS could sue Trump right now for trying to eradicate ISIS. So why do so many, why did so many of the lower courts, though, get this wrong? Because it does, according from what we're hearing coming out of the court, it does look like it is going to tip in the president's favor and it is going to uphold his his right to be able to impose this because it's not a law. It's a, it's a temporary restriction, which he has the right to do. Why do you have so many of the lower courts gotten this wrong? Uh, it, it could be because. They don't fully understand the history of the Constitution. I mean, when the uh, uh, First Amendment, when the American people ratified the First Amendment, that no one said, no one thought, there's no indication that they believed that it would um, alter the inherent sovereign power of the United States to conduct foreign policy and decide who can come into the, into the country. Mm -hmm. And in, in America, the people are the sovereign. So it's lodged in the people acting through their elected representatives to decide these things. Right. It could also be that these are partisan judges that are trying to find any hook they can in order to deny Trump his ability to do his job. It certainly could be. And I think there was a... The, 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 there was definite forum shopping going on. Mm -hmm. Speaking of forum shopping, let's let's talk about a third federal judge that has now ruled against the president's decision to wind down DACA, which we know was not something that went through Congress. This was something that President Obama, with his pen and his phone, put in and created this program for deferred action for childhood arrivals. Uh, this is the third judge that has ruled against this, and this judge has gone far enough to say, you not only have to, to stop this, you need to reinstate DACA and giving him 90 days, giving the administration 90 days to do so. Again, this looks like it's probably going to head to the Supremes. Is that where you think this is going to go? I think it will go to the Supreme Court, though I think this particular case is actually, when you look at it, a, probably a win for the government because uh, the, the court gave DHS another chance to write another memo rescinding DACA mm -hmm. and explaining in more detail why it's illegal. And I think the government will be able to do that to the uh, satisfaction of the judge, and then they, they win the case. But the same, a, a very similar injunction is in place in the Regents' case now before the Ninth Circuit. Yeah. And if the Ninth Circuit upholds it, it, it's going to the Supreme Court. Chris, can you tell me why it matters if Obama's DACA plan is, is unconstitutional or not? It seems like the court's getting hung up on that. 
Uh, my, my position on this throughout has been, who cares? The current president can change that policy just as easily as President Obama created it, right? What does it matter if it's unconstitutional or not? Well, it, it matters, uh, I think, because if it is, court shouldn't be reinstating it. Uh, you know, the, if the court finds uh, one rule to be invalid, like the rescission here, it doesn't go and reinstate a previous rule that's also invalid. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the status quo before that, that, that invalid rule was put in place, which here would mean no DACA. Mm -hmm. So you know, plaintiffs can't even win here if DACA is uh, invalid. And, and which it clearly is because it, for one thing, it didn't go through notice and comment. Huh, interesting. Well, yeah. so, but, but, but I generally get your point that Trump, it, it's just so obvious that Trump has the ability to undo a previous policy. Yes. And and he, uh, but the way he, they're seizing on the way he did it. Oh, he's saying it's unlawful. And that's why he's rescinding it. Right. Because Trump doesn't want to, or didn't at that point, want to say that it's bad policy. Yeah, he could say that the aliens told him to do it. And I feel like he'd still have the power. Uh, Christopher, thank you. I really appreciate you. your insights this morning, sir. 